I'm here to serve and protect my community. You know what I mean? That's what the police are supposed to do. Serve and protect, not swerve and disrespect mm -hmm. with a thousand guys on the curve in the projects. <laughs> Think about the saga continues and some of its foundation. You know, a lot of math was just uh, making music. And uh, I recall him visiting me. I don't know, maybe he had four or five tracks done that he's, that he's recorded with some of the Wu Tang brothers, uh, Meth Lee in the pack. And when I heard him, I was like, yo, yo, this sounds like Wu right here. You know what I mean? And, um, and, and I just told him to keep it up. Yeah, when RZA first um, <clears throat> suggested I should do the next Wu-Tang Clan album, um, it, it, it was a surprise to me, for one. Um, for two, it, it, was, it, it hit me, because it was like, whoa, I, I recognize that he's seen something in me. And at the time, I didn't see it. Like, like, you know, I didn't see it in myself. I just see me working. And I knew dealing with, like, the, the Clan, it's like you have, you know, it's so many different individuals that have grown and developed over the years and everybody has their, you know, their own, they have their own way of seeing things and how they want things to be done. And, and being in, you know, within the inside of the core of the group, you know, I see what, you know, what RZA was going through, putting the album together. I, I was like, I don't know if I'm ready for all that right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm gonna be honest. When he came to me with the music that he played to me uh, towards the end of 2015, when he had, some of these songs created, it was sounding like that vintage, you know what I mean? And I was, you know, I was inspired by hearing it. I've been with Red and Meth really since the start of, of their relationship, because How High, 95, I went with them on a How High tour back in 1995. Red Man, we look at him like as a Wu-Tang cousin, you know, he's a true and living MC, one of the best brothers you're gonna ever meet. He's a workaholic too, so it's been many nights we've been up on a bus and he has his equipment set up over here on one table and I'm over here on the next table with my equipment set up. <laughs> and, you know what I mean? And it, it, it's like, he may have the speakers on, I got my headphones on, or vice versa. That's why Meth is on it a lot too, because he was hearing what I was doing, he was on the road, he was there from the beginning and it's like, the relationship I have with him, it's like when they was hearing it, it's like, wait, hold on. It was no, it was not a problem to get them to do what I needed them to do. So you're saying it's like when an MC heard the beat, he wanted to eat it up. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, the, that's what makes this project so cool too. It's not enforced. The company that's putting this record out, uh, first E1 is the, E1 is the holding company. Uh, my label is called 36 Chambers ALC. Math label is uh, All Math Production. I did a joint venture with his company. Be on the lookout for 36 Chambers, ALC. Uh, we are really striving to be one of those companies you could turn to for positive energy. Oh, you mean Martin Scarelli? No, well, the song has nothing to do with him. I think that's a big misconception. I, I, I think that's the media sometimes, because I've seen a headline like, Wu-Tang Clan, this is Martin Scarelli. And it, it, it was a metaphoric line. Or, you know, Deck, Deck was like, like, my price hiking like the pills Martin Scarelli sells. So it wasn't, you know, it's, it's just metaphoric. It's, it's just like, a simple shot, yeah. you know. You're gonna, you know, Wu Tang don't need a whole song on you. Like Red Man said, trying to, uh, you know, uh, is it um, trying to uh, do something at 40? What he said? Oh, you, you can have it all, shorty. Like, They're yeah, basically like, saying at 40 years old, I ain't trying to like be competing and and battle and flip on you at 40. I don't gotta do that. I'm a man. You know what I mean? Uh, so the idea is that that you know, every line has its lesson. But if you think about a guy like Martin Scarelli, right, you could think of, a, of, of, of him being actually a hip hop, they call him a hip hop supervillain right now. You know what I mean? And I, th I, th I think that's cool because that's what hip hop does. You know, he's a fan of the music and he actually found a way to be a part of the history. You know what I mean? So, but Rebel INS lyric just, you know, reminds us, hold on, you know, hold on. <laughs> You know what I mean? Don't forget what he did also, you know what I mean? Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. And if you ain't learned that, that lesson should be learned, basically. It's like, you know, don't play <laughs> to this day. As you know, as time go on, people sometimes forget uh, the, the message, the energy, uh, and the foundation that Wu-Tang has brought in because so many other things have come. 
and every once in a while you gotta be minded. Like, you know, we have a New Testament, right? But sometimes you gotta go back and check up on the Old Testament, you know what I mean? Uh, and I, I think that's what Wu does. Even, even in the midst of all this, you know, different forms of music that's popping right now, which we love, we DJ, so we, we love the music. But still, you know, you need a dose of Wu-Tang. So that rugged, raw sound that uh, it, um, it kind of sends a tingle in the spine in all yeah. reality. You know what I mean? I guess that's what I said in the song, Triumph, my beats travel like a vortex up your spine to the top of your cerebral cortex and make you think, make you feel like you bust a nut from raw sex. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my history goes back with, uh, um, I started off DJing for Jizza when he was on Cold Chillin'. Um, and, and when Rizza was on Tommy Boy, you know, I did graffiti. And I remember uh, doing, when Rizza had to, you know, he, he asked me to do the stickers. Yeah. So I did the original stickers and he had Wu-Tang on the stickers. And I loved it personally just because I love the karate flicks. Like, like, you know, that was one thing. We had a lot of things in common. And, and, and that was just one of many things. So I was like, okay, that's fat, you know, the Wu-Tang. Um, but yeah, when it came down to the logo, basically it was really like, we did the, you know, the original ones, the concept yep. we saw about like, you know. The First it was the word Wu-Tang. Mm -hmm. Then we was like, you know, I just take the W and, cause I wanted to, uh, I was thinking already of the song Protect Your Neck. So I was like, I want a uh, W with somebody head chopped off. And he's carrying it because we're gonna chop. We coming to chop MC's head off, heads off. But when we saw that, that was like that wasn't it. He already drew a sticker that had the W. It had a sword. You know what I mean? He had the the head thing didn't work, so we just said, yo, just take the W, put it on a book, and put a sword underneath, so that our message is that you could choose the book or the sword. You know what I mean? But one way or the other, you got to make that choice when it comes to us. And uh. And, from, and that was the, really the first uh, rendition of the W done by his hands. I basically had, you know, half my rent money. <laughs> you know, I'm, you know I'm, it, was, it, was, it was professional though. It was like I'm paying, paying, for, I'm paying for a logo, you know. You know, um, wasn't doing it for free. I, you know, I came to his job. He had a job and everything. So I had to come to his job, you know what I mean? And like, yo. Yeah, him goes power and divine. Came, came rolling up on the scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and we, 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 uh, we, you know, we, um, we saw it when you know, we looked at it. Yeah, this is the one. Mm -hmm. 